Hi, and welcome to our office. If you've been asked to watch this special educational program, then we believe you're a candidate for the medical breakthrough therapy of VAXD disc decompression therapy. Relax, but do pay close attention as the information that will be shared will be crucial in your understanding the steps necessary to end your neck or back pain and get your life back. Let's begin. First of all, chronic pain can make a 50-year-old feel 80. So the question comes down to, how do you want to age? Are you fearful that you'll no longer be able to enjoy your favorite activities? Or retain your personal freedom to enjoy your life and that of your families? See, chronic pain limits your life, but it doesn't have to anymore. See, whatever in life is not properly maintained will always develop a problem. But problems are usually silent. You don't feel your teeth rot. You don't feel your disc deteriorate. You don't feel your arteries clog. Often we don't even feel relationships begin to crumble. We notice them when they get to crisis. Now, that's probably where you are right now, which is your why you're in our office. The information today you'll be armed once and for all with the action steps to end your pain. The five most dangerous words to your future, and they're simple words that if spoken can threaten or even ruin the rest of your life, destroying your future health, happiness, and success. And those five words are, maybe it'll go away. See, if you've ever thought or spoken those words, the real disturbing facts is that 85% of the U.S. population will suffer lower back or neck pain at some time in their life. It's the leading cause of disability, the number one leading cause of missed work, and the second leading uh, reason for uh, visits to the doctor's office. Also, spine surgery is the second leading surgical procedure in America with dismal results. You know, they did a study and they followed patients uh, for 12 months after they first visited their doctor. One year after the initial consultation with their medical doctor, 75% of patients still had pain or disability. So it is clear that back pain does not get better without proper treatment. So what might that treatment look like? You know, let's be very clear that without proper care, the pain can come more often, it can last longer, it can become more severe, there can be changes in tissue damage, decrease in strength, loss of motion, deterioration, joint stiffening, degeneration, disc damage, nerve involvement. It's not a pretty picture. So most folks try the first line of defense, which is medication or rest. That's inexpensive, but it's very seldom effective. Some folks will try the proven uh, track record of chiropractic treatments. It's highly effective in treating uncomplicated back pain, and it can cost anywhere from $50 to $80 per treatment for a total course of $800 to $1,000. Some folks will go the physical therapy route, which actually has a dismal track record with chronic pain. It costs around $200 a day, and a normal course of physical therapy will cost between six dollars and $10,000. Now, if nothing has changed, then the testing begins, x-rays and MRIs, CAT scans, maybe some EMG testing or bone density scans. Now if the findings come back and they can't really figure out what's causing the pain, then what happens is you go back for additional chiropractic care, another thousand or two dollars minimum, or you're sent for additional physical therapy or occupational therapy for an additional ten to thirty thousand dollars. If the problem came back and they found out, okay, there is definitely a disc issue. Traditionally what happens is you're either sent to pain management which is just taking a lot of pills for another ten to thirty thousand dollars or to have spinal surgery which can cost between thirty and sixty thousand dollars plus an additional four to six weeks off of work and let's be honest even with insurance coverage copays and deductibles would cost you ten to fifteen thousand dollars out of your pocket so not only is this gauntlet expensive but the average time you spend going through all of this is between one and a half and three years it's wasted time and money that you'll never get back and again, the results are dismal, as we'll soon find out. So that's not to mention that 30% of disc herniations are missed on an MRI. See, and the reason is because in the MRI, you're just laying flat in the tube. Uh, as they're suggesting here is if you start to move or bend, you can pick up uh, damage that isn't seen when you're just lying flat. So the problem then is we need to compare. What does mainstream medical science say about what really works to solve chronic back pain? And what doesn't? So let's take a brief look. 
The first line of defense most people go through is physical therapy. Now physical therapy based on medical studies has been shown to have anywhere from a negative 51 percent to a positive 10 percent success rate. Here's what that means. According to a recent medical study at McGill University, there's little evidence that physical therapy or physical therapy modalities provide any long-term benefit greater than a sugar pill, the placebo. The therapies that were examined included exercise, ultrasound, heat, acupuncture, laser therapy, and electric stim. They said none of these therapies improved your symptoms or improved the patient's quality of life that outlasted the therapy, which means as soon as you stop it, the pain comes back. And another study that concluded that receiving physical therapy, because it irritated the already irritated joints and discs and nerves and muscles, it was associated with a longer duration of back pain. These doctors concluded that at every moment in time, patients receiving physical therapy for chronic back pain had a 51% less chance to recover the following week than if they didn't receive physical therapy. See, heating or cooling or shocking the painful area fails because it doesn't address the underlying cause and the exercise and other therapies may actually aggravate the already painful area. So therapy is not the answer. So some folks are like, okay, let's use medication. Well, medications have been shown in the medical literature to have between a negative 1 to as high as a positive 27% success rate. So what that looks like is this. Uh, in a major medical journal, Spine, they looked at the drug Celebrex and Vioxx for the treatment of chronic back pain. It was a nine-week study, and 5% of those people treated with the medications did show some relief. However, 6.1% had negative side effects from the medication, leaving the drugs with a negative 1.1% failure rate, and the delay of more successful treatments making the problem worse. So next on the line, folks would assume, well, okay, if it's a joint-related problem and disc, let's use traction. Well, here's what the experts say about traction. Uh, there have been no published studies demonstrating that traction lowers the pressure of the disc and traction over a 50 year period of time has a dismal track record with chronic lower back pain. It's not even recommended uh, for disc herniations. So that's not the answer. So a lot of folks can say let's, let's up it a little bit and let's go to those epidural shots. Now the experts say that has anywhere from a 0 to a 5 percent success rate. In fact what they had to say but the shots have been used for over 50 years to try to reduce inflammation. However, the American Academy of Neurology stated that although the shots may provide some short-term relief, the amount of relief fell short of values viewed as clinically meaningful. Another medical study compared the steroid shots with saline or salt water, and after three months there was no difference. And the reason is that they don't provide lasting results because they do not address the underlying cause of the pain, and in fact the shots may cause more problems by causing things like osteoporosis. Every shot you get increases your chance for osteoporosis up to six-fold, and it delays more appropriate treatment. So the next thing up in line is surgery. Well, surgery has been shown to have anywhere from a 1% to a 47% success rate. So a long-term study, back surgery, it's not as good as many believe. A large medical study showed that for lumbar disc herniation, after the surgery, 70% still complained of back pain. 45% still had pain in their leg, 47% were receiving disability, and 17% had a repeat surgery. The authors, the doctors stated that there was no difference in long-term results for those who had surgery as compared to conservative care. Another study reported the overuse of surgery is the single most damaging intervention for back pain. In a Volvo Award medical paper, uh, Dr. Waddell stated that dramatic surgical success unfortunately only applies to about 1% of patients. The failure with the remaining 99%, the problems become progressively worse. Another doctor stated that having a disc extrusion, which is the worst of all disc conditions, is not to be used as overwhelming evidence that surgery is necessary. So there are times for surgery, but according to these medical experts, it's very, very rare uh, to help stop your pain. In fact, the American Medical Association states that four years after surgery, 90% of patients show no benefit or are left worse off from having had the surgery. So the question that has to be is, well, what does show promise? The first is something called neurofeedback, and its success rate is in the almost 68% range. The lowest is 54%, which is certainly higher than anything else we just saw. And here's what it states. Neurofeedback says that the brain controls the spinal cord, which controls the nerves. And when there's a problem, the brain and the nerves are involved. And by monitoring the brain or the muscles or the nerves, that one can help stop that pain. 
Medical schools like Duke and Johns Hopkins, Harvard, Yale, Northwestern, and Stanford are all exploring this, and here's what they found. The Journal of Neuroscience studied people with back pain and found that their brains aged 10 to 20 years per year of pain. And Dr. Mackey at Stanford University found that pain exists not only in the injured body part, your neck or your back, but also in that body part's corresponding part of the brain. See, many common treatments fail because they only address the injured body part, but they leave the brain to continue to send painful signals. With calming neurofeedback, we can address both parts of the pain cycle. What also is effective is these boot camps. See, these are intensive four-week boot camps. They found that chronic pain affects everything from your relationships with your spouse to your family, your friends, your boss, your job. And new research suggests that chronic pain affects the brain's ability to rest. It disrupts the system that normally charges up some brain regions and powers down others. And this was done at Northwestern. And they took MRIs that showed people who had pain, their brains lit up differently than a normal brain would. There is an objective biological difference in the brain. That can also help explain things like the sleep disturbance, uh, decision-making problems, mood changes that often associate with chronic pain. And although the boot camps can cost $20,000 cash, not paid for by insurance, they said it is cost-effective compared to that medical gauntlet we talked about in the pill merry-go-round. And studies show that patients who have completed boot camps experience lasting pain reductions and lower stress. So neurofeedback is certainly a viable option, and it's one of the treatments that we explore in the office, as well as it's something that I personally teach doctors worldwide. Next is something called a gentle neurospinal alignment, and it has between a 27 and an 81% success rate. So the lows and the highs are getting better. And here's what we know. We know the brain controls the spine and controls the nerves. And we know those nerves are encased in bones and muscles. So if the muscles are tight or the bones are out of alignment, we can cause back pain. If they're out of alignment long enough, we can cause a disc herniation, or it can irritate the nerves into the leg. If the nerves come into the neck, it can irritate the neck, things into the arms and shoulder, all the way down into the wrist with things like carpal tunnel. Because all these nerves get jammed up into the brain, we can have stress and anxiety, things like attention deficit, fibromyalgia, fibro fog, depression, headaches, migraines, TMJ, insomnia. And here's what science tells us. In chronic and disabled and prior treatment failed, that includes surgery, so everything failed including surgery, these patients in a hospital received chiropractic care for two to three weeks. 81% with referred pain, which means pain in the arm or leg, and 48% with nerve root compression, which means the disc or the bone was laying on the nerve, were pain free. And the good news is the relief lasted for years, whereas with the drugs, acupuncture, and the other therapy, the pain returned as soon as the therapy stops. The neurospinal alignments work because they help get to the cause. But what works even better and is the primary workhorse in our office because we see such chronic uh, conditions is VAX-D, vertebral axial decompression. The lowest rating is at 71%, the highest rating is at 88.8%, .8%, and VAX-D is FDA approved. And what makes it different than traction is this. Inside of the disc is something called the intradiscal pressure, and that pressure is around 100 millimeters of mercury. Just like your blood pressure is 120 over 80, this is at 100. Well, when one starts to pull with traction, once you hit about 40 pounds of pull, so whether you're hanging upside down on an inversion table or from a tree limb or what have you, once you hit 40 pounds of pull, the brain senses danger. And once it senses danger, you can't think your way out of this. It's an automatic reflex. The muscles clamp down putting more pressure on the disc and the joints and actually sends the pressure up, which is exactly the opposite of what you want to do and why traction is not recommended for back or disc conditions. What makes VAX-D unique is that it is decompression and it allows that pressure inside the disc to drop all the way down to a negative 150. And it's that drop in pressure that actually acts like a vacuum and it draws in the, the fluids and herniated material. VAX-D literally allows that pressure to drop. So the numbers tell the story. VAX-D works. It's FDA cleared, non-surgical, um, and it was designed and developed by a team of physicians, engineers, and technicians at major teaching hospitals. So our goal is this, to do an initial assessment, whether you're going to accept or reject your case. Our goal is to have you complete our decompression therapy program and get your life back. Now some folks will need some low force neurospinal alignments to help them along that way. 
Some folks may need some neurofeedback to help them. Some folks may have a toxicity issue that may need to be addressed in addition to their decompression. Some people may have an imbalance in an arch of their foot, throwing their gait and their pelvis off and their back off. So, but our goal is to have you complete your decompression program with success. In addition to addressing your specific challenges that are er interfering with your body's inborn ability to heal, we utilize the most proven, effective, and safe treatment options so that you can rest comfortably knowing that your problem will be successfully addressed. Now, VAX-D has actually now three approvals from the FDA. The first was in 89, the second was in 96, and the most recent was in 06 or 07 when they came out with the cervical edition for the VAX-D. The first research study was done in a hospital setting where they actually injected a needle into the disc to measure the pressure as the VAXD decompressed. And that's where they found that the pressure inside the disc is dropped into the negative range as we just discussed, something that has never been shown before and something that traction cannot do. Now, this is actually a picture <coughs> uh, of a real spine, and all the red that you see are blood vessels. The blood is everywhere, but it's outside the disc. And when the disc becomes traumatized and that pressure goes up, we can't get the nutrients into the disc. So each time the VAX-D decompresses and it drops the pressure, it brings these vital fluid from the blood vessels back into the disc and allow it to heal naturally with time. Now a disc takes roughly 500 days to heal, although you will feel relief in the first one to two weeks and the process in our office should be completed in eight to 10 weeks, um, but the disc will continue to heal for up to 500 days. Just like a broken bone hurts, the cast comes off in four to six weeks, you can go back to using that limb, but that bone continues to knit for up to a year silently without you knowing about it, and the same thing happens to the disc. Success rates are this. Uh, after the tenth treatment, now keep in mind the treatments are done four days a week uh, for five weeks and once a week for four weeks. That's for a simple case. When there's more degeneration, when there's more damage, when the problem has been there longer and there are more than one area involved, those numbers can go up, but not horribly so. At the tenth treatment, 43% of the people are already out of pain. Not healed yet, but out of pain, and the healing is taking place. 24% are partially remiss, which means they're feeling better. Each and every day is getting better, but the problem has not been solved yet, and in time it will be. And by that 10th treatment point, 33% have not noticed anything yet. We do an evaluation at this point to make sure that we're on the right path, and for 67% of the people, we just continue forward. By their 20th treatment, 76% are completely free uh, pain, uh, completely fixed, able to go back and live their life as if nothing had ever happened. 20% are significantly improved, although not completely improved, <clears throat> but this 33% with more time and more care drops to a mere 4%. So 96% of people will, uh, will have their life restored uh, back to the way that it used to be. So VAX-D has an impressive success rate, even for the most complicated of cases, and has been shown effective for, for chronic and severe cases, and best of all, it works without the use of dangerous drugs or unnecessary surgery. How long does it last? Well, if we take a look, four years afterwards. If on a scale of 0 to 10, the average person had a pain level of 7.4, at the end of their care, their pain level was a 3. Uh, four years later, the pain level is at a 1.5, which is, for all intents and purposes, non-existent. When you compare this to surgery, the AMA states that 90% of people, four years after surgery, either showed no benefit or were left worse off. Four years after VAX-D, they continue to get better. VAX-D clearly has the advantage without the unnecessary risks of, of dangerous drugs or unnecessary surgery. So let's briefly review a revealing study that was performed at an oil company in Oklahoma. The protocol was simple. The employees had an option, if they injured themselves, to be operated on or to go use VAX-D. <clears throat> Over a period of four years, five employees chose the surgery and five chose VAX-D. Now recently the experiment was discontinued and all employees now are encouraged to use VAX-D prior to surgery. So of the five people, there were 11 surgeries performed on those five people and six VAX-D sessions performed on those five people. Here's how that breaks down. <clears throat> the surgery group all reports daily back pain. The VAX-D group all reports to be pain-free <clears throat> or have minimal discomfort that does not inhibit their work activity in any way. Of that surgery group, of the five, three were reoperated on. 
one was operated on four times and one is on permanent disability that's why there were 11 surgeries of the five that chose to have the vax one was retreated successfully two years later for an unrelated injury all are working at their normal duties the group that had surgery the average time off of work was 17 and a half weeks with the vax d the average time was 37 and a half hours and with our extended office hours you don't have to miss any work imagine what that saves you in lost salary Procedure cost for the surgery group for the average for those five cases was just under $53,000, whereas for the VAX-D group was just a little over $6,000. That's impressive. So what I'd like to do next is to show you a short video specifically discussing VAX-D disc decompression therapy. My patients are like family to me. If they came in with a serious back problem, I usually referred them to a surgeon, but not anymore. Welcome to the VAX-D Physicians Network. VAX-D therapy is the non-surgical solution to serious low back problems. Eighty-five percent of us will suffer from serious low back pain at some time in our lives. For people under the age of 45, back pain is the major cause of disability and lost time from work. In fact, it is the second most common ailment seen by general practice physicians each year. And it is the number one health care expense in the United States, costing $80 billion annually. If low back pain is making your life miserable, vertebral axial decompression may be the answer. VAX-D is a non-surgical therapy developed for the treatment of serious low back pain. This breakthrough technology was invented by Dr. Alan Dyer, former Deputy Minister of Health of Ontario, Canada. Dr. Dyer is also known for the development of the heart defibrillator. VAX-D therapy uses FDA-approved technology along with clinically proven principles to relieve pressure on vital structures of the spine including the discs and spinal nerves. It is not just aimed at treating symptoms but is designed to alleviate the underlying problems that cause low back pain. In a structure as intricate as the spine a lot can go wrong. The spine is made up of a series of bones called vertebrae each cushioned by a soft, shock-absorbing disc. Probably the single most troublesome portion of our back is the lumbar spine, or lower back area. It is usually the area of the spine which receives the most stress and strain. As a result, more spinal problems occur in the lumbar region than anywhere else. And just how much pressure do our backs have to deal with? Even when we are lying down resting, our lower lumbar discs have a pressure of 75 millimeters of mercury pushing on them. When we simply stand up, the pressure increases to more than 100 millimeters. If we lift a medium-sized box, the pressure on the discs increases to more than 375 millimeters. And if we lift the box wrong by bending over at the waist instead of at the knees, the pressure is more than 750 millimeters. That's a lot of stress on the muscles, vertebrae, and discs in our back. It is no wonder that 80% of all severe back pain is caused by problems in three key areas. Here you're looking at a disc from the top. The front is up the back is down, this is the left side, this is the right side. The disc is oval and consists of two different kinds of tissue. There's an outer ligamentous tissue which is tough and strong and there's a center jelly-like tissue which is mucoid and allows for a certain amount of compression. This system allows these vertebrae to move back and forth a certain distance. It protects these open spaces in the back 
while allowing that movement. These open spaces are also two. A large space in the center through which a tube carrying the nerves to the lower body runs. And second, at each segment, smaller side spaces through which nerves to individual components pass. Uh, I hurt myself uh, doing the simple thing of moving a 44-pound case. I'm in air transportation, and um, uh, the simple fact of trying to move that uh, popped a disc in my back. It, it's funny how something as simple as and as small as that can change your life. Uh, it hurt. It hurt. felt like somebody was sticking a, an ice pick in my back. It drove me actually to my knees. I went to the doctor, and uh, he took x-rays. Couldn't find anything wrong. Figured it was a muscle uh, or mechanical type problem. So they recommended some rest and some physical therapy. But when the pain didn't go away and there was nothing on x-rays that showed there was a problem, I had an MRI. The MRI showed that I had a protruding disc at the L4, L5 level. And that was causing problems with leg pains uh, shooting down, down my left leg. Uh, what was unfortunate also about it is that I'm the safety manager at my job, so I had the dubious distinction of being able to put my own name in the OSHA log. Um, I got a lot of ribbing from my friends on that, as to my coworkers. I went through physical therapy, and uh, that was supposed to work as far as pain management, but uh, the pain didn't go away. It kept on uh, aggravating and, and being there. I couldn't sit comfortably. I couldn't stand comfortably. I couldn't lay down comfortably. As a matter of fact, I spent 10 weeks sleeping on the floor with my knees elevated to give myself relief from the pain. I finally heard about VAX-D, which is a, a, a simple non-operative procedure. I decided to do some homework, go look into the procedure, and um, through the procedure, I actually went through it. Uh, my company approved getting, getting the procedure done. I went through it, and the pain went away. This is amazing. I was an active person. I played tennis. Uh, I do a lot of yard work, and I went from that to being like an 87-year-old hobbled man. I couldn't even lift my briefcase. Once I went through the procedure, the pain was gone. I'm able to run and jump, play tennis again. Um, my wife's happy because I can do yard work again. And uh, a follow-up MRI showed that there was no, uh, no indication of any type of trauma whatsoever. The uh, disc is back in place, and it doesn't even look like I was injured. I'm healthy. I have no pain. I'm playing four hours of tennis uh, three times a week. Um, I'm back to normal. It's amazing. By virtue of their training, doctors want to help a patient who is suffering. Until recently, however, most available options in the treatment of serious back pain have been limited and failed at treating the underlying causes associated with disc and joint problems. It can be frustrating to doctors when they cannot relieve a patient's pain. Too often, back surgery is considered as the next step simply because a doctor thinks it is the only alternative. CBS News reported that in the United States alone, there are 80,000 unnecessary back surgeries done each year. But surgery has its own drawbacks. Back surgery should not be entered into lightly. Besides hospitalization and the recovery time that you must go through, you also have the risk of general anesthesia. In addition, problems can arise from infection, scarring, and its associated complications. The surgery may also produce a general loss of mobility. An even larger consideration is that many times the surgery just doesn't work. Or if it does work, it often only offers temporary relief. You see, when you surgically change one disc, you can actually put additional pressure on the disc above and below it, which can lead to future back problems. Sometimes even another surgery. Vax-D therapy offers new hope for people with serious low back problems and offers doctors and their patients a non-invasive procedure designed to reduce pressure on the affected discs and joints, allowing them to heal naturally. Vax-D does all of this without any of the risks or the high costs associated with surgery. In fact, VAX-D is less than one-tenth the cost of surgery. In 1995, I was involved in an automobile accident. I went from being a happy, healthy woman 
into a miserable, irritable person who was in pain every day. Every morning I would wake up and I would have pain shooting down both of my legs constantly, all day long, they would last. I had severe pains in my lower back. I was experiencing spasms in my lower back area. My doctor decided to put me on some conservative care. We tried that for a while. We did a lot of physical therapy, massages, ultrasounds. I've even tried medication and nothing seemed to relieve the pain I was experiencing. Finally, I even decided to have surgery. The surgery that I did have did relieve some of the pains I was experiencing in my legs, but it did nothing for my lower back area. Finally, my doctor found this, a therapy called the VAX-D. I decided to go ahead and try the VAX-D, because at this point in my life, I was gonna try anything. I just wanted to wake up one day and not be in pain. I went ahead and tried the VAX-D. I did 15 consecutive treatments on the VAX-D. And one morning, I woke up and I was able to sit up in bed. I was never able to sit up before. I used to get up in the morning and roll out of the bed, get on all fours and pull myself up. And that morning when I woke up and sat up, it was one of the happiest days of my life. VAX-D has been the subject of several clinical studies and has been written up in the Journal of Neurosurgery. Most recently, an independent study of more than 900 patients treated with VAX-D therapy was published by the Medical Technologies Group. Overall, VAX-D was shown to be successful in nearly 8 out of every 10 cases, including patients suffering from single and multiple herniations, degenerative disc disease, and facet syndrome. Due to this remarkable success rate, VAX-D has had its share of media attention in the United States and in Canada. VAX-D therapy requires no hospitalization or anesthesia. This simple procedure consists of a series of 15 to 20 treatments scheduled at your convenience. You begin each 30-minute treatment by lying comfortably on the patented VAX-D table with your lower back fitted with an adjustable nylon harness. Simple hand grips connect the upper body to the table and allow you the immediate freedom to release and end the therapy session at any time. The table slowly divides under computer-controlled and monitored conditions gradually relieving pressure and decompressing the affected discs and joints. VAX-D literally takes the pressure off your discs and spinal nerves. As you lie on the table, the pressure within the disc in your back is measured at 75 millimeters of mercury positive. The VAX-D therapy reduces intradiscal pressure to as low as 150 to 200 millimeters of mercury negative which creates a vacuum within the disc. Now, simply put, this reduction in pressure allows the back to help heal itself in two major ways. First, it creates a vacuum-like state in the disc that helps retract the nucleus. This retraction, in turn, helps to allow the outer layers of the disc to get back into position and begin to mend. Just like a broken bone has the ability to mend itself, the outer layers of the disc can mend themselves once the pressure is taken off the disc and nerves. This is an MRI of a patient with a ruptured disc. The spinal cord and nerves show up as the white column. You can see the rupture which shows up as the dark circle putting pressure on the nerve. After treatment with VAX-D therapy, we have a follow-up MRI that was taken in the same area. Now as you can see, the ruptured disc has retracted and the pressure on the nerves has been removed. Prior to VAX-D therapy, this just wasn't possible. If you suffer from low back pain caused by a herniated or degenerative disc, there is new hope. With VAX-D therapy, there is no hospitalization, no surgery, no fear, and simply no reason to suffer anymore. Thank you again for your interest in the VAX-D therapy. We hope you call today and make an appointment with one of our network physicians. You'll be glad you did.
If I've had back surgery, can I use Vax-D? Although one of our physicians will evaluate you to see if you are a candidate for Vax-D therapy, clinical results have shown that Vax-D provides relief for almost all patients suffering from the common causes of low back pain. This includes patients who have had one or more previous back surgeries. Once again, these conditions include ruptured discs, degenerated disc, and sciatica and posterior facet syndrome. Most people with these problems experience relief of their pain and are able to return to a normal level of activity both at work and play, such as golf and tennis. Will VAXD help a slipped disc? A herniated or ruptured disc is sometimes incorrectly referred to as a slipped disc. This makes it sound like the disc has slipped out of place and can possibly be manipulated back into its place by a doctor. The truth is, there is no such thing as a slipped disc. Discs can't slip because they're attached by connective tissue to the vertebrae above and below. Since a slipped disc is really a herniated disc, Vax-D therapy is very successful in treating the problem. If I go on Vax-D, how many treatments will I need and just how quickly can I expect to get better? The number of treatment sessions required depends on the diagnosis and the overall severity of your condition. Treatments generally average between 15 and 20 sessions. Some difficult cases may require a few additional treatments. Relief from pain and other responses to treatment vary with the individual and their physiology. Most patients, however, will experience pain relief after the first few treatments. Is VAX-D as effective as surgery? In most cases, VAX-D therapy is much better than surgery. Why? First, studies show that VAX-D is successful in almost 8 out of 10 cases. On the other side, surgery has shown itself to be far less effective. VAX-D treats the underlying problems that cause low back pain. By creating negative intradiscal pressures and creating a vacuum-like force, the nucleus of the disc is allowed to retract, which in turn takes the pressure off the spinal nerves. Surgery physically alters the spine by removing all or part of the problematic disc. Although this removes the pressure on the nerve and may offer pain relief, the surgery tends to put more stress on the healthy disc above and below. This can lead to pain and problems in those adjacent discs over time. Are there any reasons I can't go on VAXD? There are a few individuals that cannot take advantage of this treatment. Now, these people have conditions such as tumors, fractures, gross osteoporosis, or certain conditions that compromise the structural integrity of the spine. These conditions are present in a small percentage of the people with serious low back problems. If you don't have one of these conditions and are suffering from serious disc-related back, hip, or leg pain, you're more than likely a candidate for VAX-D. VAX-D seems to work so well. Why haven't I heard more about it? Although the VAX-D table is an FDA-approved medical device, and the therapy has worked on thousands of patients, including hockey superstar Mario Lemieux and world champion pole vaulter Earl Bell. VAX-D is too new to have become a household word. Many family doctors are unaware of VAX-D and its effective treatment of serious low back pain and its underlying symptoms. More and more physicians and healthcare providers are learning about VAX-D and the phenomenal results it has achieved in the various clinical studies that have been performed. This awareness of VAX-D therapy seems to increase every day, and we expect VAX-D to be the standard of care for low back pain in the not-too-distant future. How is VAX-D different from traction? Although traction stretches the lower back, it is incapable of decompressing the lumbar disc and spinal nerves. The VAX-D table, by way of its patented programmable logic control, does not trigger muscle spasm and therefore is able to reduce the pressure within the lumbar disc to previously unheard of levels. VAX-D therapy is revolutionizing the treatment of herniated and degenerative discs. It doesn't just treat the symptoms. It treats the very causes of low back pain. End the pain, call today, and set up an appointment with one of our specialists. I'll start living an active life with you. Good game, guy. Thanks. This program has been brought to you by the VaxD Physicians Network. If you know a friend or relative who has a serious back problem, please share this video with them. 
Now, if you'd like to find out more about the specific back problem that's been affecting you, please continue to watch the next portion of this video. It covers specific areas, such as degenerative disc disease, herniated discs, facet syndrome, sciatica, and spinal stenosis. As we age, the disc goes through a natural maturation and degenerative process. This is in part due to simple aging and part due to the wear and tear that goes on in our lives. Here we're looking at a disc that is early in its degenerative phase. What has happened is that there are fissures or cracks developing in the outer part of the ligamentous disc annulus, the solid part that holds the pieces together. Now this is quite early on and is difficult to detect by any of our imaging systems. Magnetic resonance imaging, which is a specialized technique for looking at the discs, can demonstrate early degeneration and I call your attention to this image. We're looking at a spine from the side. The vertebral bodies are the large gray squares. The discs are these bright white wafers. You can see that this one is different. It is much darker than the adjacent levels. As the disc degenerates, it becomes darker on an MRI scan because it's losing some of its water content. What this would look like in a model would be this particular specimen. As you can see, there's no longer any central nucleus and separate annulus, but rather a dried, cracked, fissured disc. When this process happens, the normal disc height, which keeps these openings large enough for the nerves, is lost and the disc collapses. You can see the distinct loss of height between the two. As the disc collapses, the spaces get smaller as they're squeezed together, and bone ridges, spurs, or osteophytes, develop along the margins, and these further add to the material making the space small, putting pressure on or compressing the small nerves that pass through to the components in the lower body. The degenerative cascade from the normal to the degenerative disc occurs in all patients or all subjects uh, throughout our life. But there can be specific events which are different from that normal degenerative cascade. When these little fissures develop in the outside part of the disc, the disc then becomes vulnerable to other injury. In the case of a subject bending and twisting and lifting, receiving a, a direct blow to the back, slipping and falling, landing on the buttocks. Any variety of traumas can cause these little curvilinear fissures to communicate with the nucleus by way of a single radial or linear tear or fissure. When this happens, the pressure in the central part of the disc can now push material through this crack into the outermost part of the disc annulus. This causes the outside or annulus to protrude or bulge slightly. This in itself can be a cause of back pain because this outer membrane is sensitive and contains a number of nerves which let you know this membrane is being stretched. And this produces back pain which can be minor, the backache we all experience periodically, or it can become quite severe. In the most advanced stage of this process, the disc can actually rupture and material from the depth of the disc extrude out into the canal, as you can see here, putting pressure on the sensitive nerves that are immediately adjacent to the disc rupture. When disc herniation occurs, disc material extends out of its normal space toward the nerves which extend to the lower extremity. In this model, we see the red disc herniation extending into the space occupied by this yellow nerve. When there is pressure put on the nerve, specific symptoms occur. These include altered sensations such as numbness or tingling or a burning sensation and can be severe 
lancinating pain which extends down the full length of the extremity. Here we see an MRI scan of a patient who has sciatica. This patient has had severe leg pain for about four to five weeks. The pain extends from the buttock down the back of the leg and calf to the undersurface of the foot. On this side, the S1 nerve, which is this vertical dark band, is pushed backward by this gray mass of tissue. This mass is a disc herniation or protrusion which has come out of the disc space, extended backward, and is now pressing against and displacing this sensitive nerve and causing the symptom of sciatica. The lumbar discs are in the front of the spine. There are moving parts in the back, the paired facet joints. These are small joints between the vertebra, here and here, which allow gliding and flexion extension movements in the spine. These joints have a capsule which surrounds the bony elements. The capsule is sensitive, and if it is stretched, can hurt. These are joints about the same size as the joints in your finger, and you can imagine if you stress or twist the joint to a certain position, it will cause pain. These joints are subject to considerable motion and wear and tear as a result of that motion. When that wear and tear becomes excessive, we get changes as demonstrated in this model. The disc space has narrowed. There are reactive ridges forming at the bone margins. The joint is also degenerating. The combination of these two degenerative processes, narrowing of the space, results in narrowing of this root canal or foramen bringing the bone edges closer to the nerve and finally causing back pain, occasionally leg pain by irritating the nerves in front of the joints. When we put the degenerative process together, if the disc space narrows and the joints become irregular and overgrown, the two combine to cause narrowing of the spinal canal, which occurs generally in older age and is often associated with severe back pain because of the small size of the canal. Procedures which make the canal larger take the pressure off of the nerve and may be helpful in eliminating these symptoms. So very shortly, we will discuss what your treatment will consist of and review any associated costs. We're confident that everyone can now comfortably afford both the time and investment to undergo their needed care plan. There are specific reasons why we obtain excellent results, and that begins with the fact that we will leave no stone unturned in making an accurate diagnosis, and our professional responsibility is to tell you the truth, not sugarcoat our findings even if you don't want to hear it. And the truth is, if you're viewing this video, you have a serious problem. See. When the tissues of the spine and nervous system are involved, it's difficult to get the job done, even with your help. Without your help, it's virtually impossible, and you may end up with a permanent condition. By now, you realize you either fix it or it'll get worse. And many of these cases will wind up having invasive procedures like surgery that fail to work and long-term drug use that eventually harms their kidneys, so we'll need you to understand your options and cooperate with us. We have a high response to our specialized care and will schedule you for the 75 minutes of treatment time to be certain that you receive the full benefits you deserve. So let's get started and explain the low cost of care in this office. Now VAXD is a relatively new procedure and is considered an elective procedure like LASIK eye surgery, dental implants, hearing aids, and plastic surgery. All of these procedures can cost $6,000 or more and are paid for by you, the patient. Now, if you do have insurance, it may or may not cover some of the other procedures that you'll be receiving, like the neurospinal alignments, the evaluations, the neurofeedback, supports, and whatnot. But the actual decompression component will have to be paid for by you. So breathe easy. We are confident that you're able to get the care that you need without the worry of finances as we offer generous discounts and flexible payment plans. With payments as low as $100 per month, now everyone can receive the care at our office, and although your care will be completed in 8 to 10 weeks, you can take upwards of 60 months to pay off the balance. It's our way of taking the worry 
out of your health care needs. We use companies like Care Credit that allow 24 months with no interest, payments as low as $25 a week, easy payment plans up to 60 months. It's just like a credit card, only it's for the doctor's office. So while you've been learning the causes of and successful treatments for your pain, we've been carefully reviewing your MRI, case history, and other information. Now in a few moments we'll convene to discuss your case. And during that consultation, four items will be addressed. Number one, what is your problem? See, an accurate diagnosis is key to ending your pain and getting your life back. Are you a candidate for our comprehensive pain relief program? Or did you wait too long? Will your case be accepted or declined? See, this is based on case severity and commitment to cooperate and follow the doctor's advice. Although there is a high response to our service, we are limited to the amount of new patients we can accept each month. Sometimes, it's beneficial for you to think about why the doctor should choose your case over another to work with. If your case is accepted, we'll choose scheduling times and make proper financial arrangements. So to end where we began, whatever in life is not properly maintained will eventually develop a problem. It's usually silent. Again, you don't feel your disc rotting and your spine decaying or your teeth rotting. It'll ultimately lead to a crisis. That's the pain that you feel. To get your life back, you need to reverse this cycle. You need to stop the crisis, correct the underlying problem with the best proven technology that exists, and return you to a preventative maintenance or a wellness lifestyle. So please relax, and someone will be with you shortly.